This is the Puma Deviate Nitro 2. And on paper, it's kind of confusing. It's part racing shoe, part everyday trainer. But on the road, it's probably my favorite Puma running shoe. Yo, what's going on everybody? My name is Kofuzi. I'm a non-elite runner who reviews shoes here on YouTube. And today I'm gonna to talk to you guys about the Puma Deviate Nitro 2. But before I give you my thoughts on this shoe, I do wanna go over some disclosures. This is a pair of shoes that Puma sent me for the purpose of review. However, they're not paying me to make this video or to use the shoe, and they're not gonna get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So with that disclosure out of the way, let's talk about the Puma Deviate Nitro Two. First, let's go over some specs. In this midsole, we have two different types of foam. This cardlard layer here that's on top that runs the entire length of the shoe is Puma's Nitro Elite Foam. That's their premium racing foam. And this white foam right here is Puma's regular Nitro Foam. So you've got two really nice materials, like nice and nicer, and sandwiched in between that is Puma's power plate and you can see that in this little window cut out here through the bottom of the shoe. Now this plate is a little bit different than the plate that's in the Nitro Elite 2 which is the higher end racing shoe even though they're both called power plates but this one in the DV8 Nitro 2 the non-elite version uh, is a carbon composite at least that's my understanding so it's going to be a little bit different not quite as rigid not quite as springy as a full carbon plate like in the racing cousin to this shoe the DV8 Nitro Elite version two. On the outsole, while we're looking at the bottom of the shoe, we can see that there is a very thick layer of rubber that's on the shoe. It's actually a little bit surprising when I first looked at it, how much rubber there is. And it's in that Puma grip, which I've had experience with in a couple of other shoes in the past couple of years. It's a really nice and grippy material that is also very, very durable, although it is going to add a little bit of weight. Overall, this shoe comes in at a weight of 9.1 ounces and 257 grams. But moving to the upper before we get to what it's like to run in the shoe, let's talk about this material. It looks almost fuzzy. To me, it kind of like looks like it's a new color for tennis balls, but it looks to me like it is a dual layer mesh system that doesn't look like it's going to be all that breathable. But to me, it feels like it was plenty of ventilated for my run, but also looks like it's going to be able to handle a lot of wear and tear from a lot of daily training mileage. On the tongue, it's a very thin tongue. Looks like it's pulled straight off of a soccer cleat. And in through the heel cup, there is a very light amount of padding just right here on the heel collar and not too much bulk in the back of the shoe. There is a very little amount of structure in this heel cup back here, nothing too rigid, but just enough to give it a little bit of shape. Now, in terms of sizing, I went with my usual running shoe size nine, but I will say for this shoe, the DV8 Nitro 2, uh, things were very snug up in the toe box. I'm not gonna say that I would want to size up for myself, but it was a tight fit. Not only was there not a lot of volume in terms of how high the space is in the toe box, but I also felt like it was uh, a little bit on the too snug side. For those of you who are on that bubble where sometimes you size up and sometimes you don't, this might be a shoe where you want to size up. All right, now that we've talked about some of the specs of the shoe, let's talk about what it was like to run in it. And my initial thoughts going into running with this shoe were that with the Nitro Elite foam that's in the forefoot of the shoe, I thought it was just going to be kind of like an extra tall version of the Nitro Elite 2, which is their racing shoe, which I really enjoyed, but thought that, you know, it's a little bit lower to the ground, not exactly to my preferences when it comes to racing, but I thought, well, maybe this could be a low key racer because it seems to have a much thicker layer of that racing foam that I like. But it ended up being a little bit more muted and a little bit more stable. The foam in this shoe didn't feel quite as premium as the foam that's in its racing cousin, even though it nominally it's the same foam. I think part of that might be due to the fact that there's that dual layer, this other layer of the white nitro foam that does look like it's mainly in the heel, but if you look in the outsole, you can see that it extends a little bit further up. So you're landing on a combination of the nitro elite foam and the regular nitro foam from Puma, both which are really good foams, but that nitro foam, the non 
elite version of the foam, the daily training version of that foam uh, is a little bit on that firmer side, which I think for a lot of people that's gonna work having that in the heel because it gives you a little bit more stability as you land and then it rolls you forward onto your toes for that next strides toe off. And I do think that ultimately I feel like there's a lot more stability in this shoe, relatively speaking, compared to its racing cousin at the expense of a little bit of the excitement that that Nitro Elite foam is capable of providing in a running experience. Not to say that this is a very firm shoe, it actually just feels like a very responsive daily training shoe. I'd say it's a little bit more comfortable and capable than a shoe that is just pure nitro foam, which I would say is pretty much what the Velocity Nitro 2 is. I did really enjoy running in that shoe earlier this year, uh, but this shoe, it feels like it's got kind of like a bigger engine under the hood. You could take both of those shoes for easy day running, but I also feel like the Deviate Nitro 2 can definitely pick up the pace if you wanted to better than the Velocity Nitro 2 could. I did take the shoe for a fartlek workout and I felt like this shoe was really nice for that. I use fartleks as kind of like in between workouts or not full on sessions, but it's a little bit more intense than an easy run. And I feel like in that situation, the DV8 Nitro 2 is kind of the perfect shoe to be able to have. I did also take the shoe for a nice longer easy run and I felt like the shoe was really nice for that. It was a little bit on the more responsive side than I would probably normally pick for an everyday run, but there was also still a pleasant softness to the shoe. So it's not a bad choice for daily training. And I do think that a lot of you are going to like it precisely just for that. So let's get to some summary points and talk about some shoes you can pair it with or consider this shoe against. Now, who's this shoe for? It's a shoe that's going to be a daily trainer for some, and it's a shoe that's gonna be a speed session shoe for others. And those of you who have been wondering what the heck's been happening with the Adidas Boston series, this is the update that I think you guys have been looking for. Now, let's talk about some shoes that you can pair it with. And I'm really thinking about some racing options to pair this shoe with. The first one that comes to mind is going to be the Asics Meta Speed Sky. I feel like kind of the a little bit of firmness, but a lot of speed that's under the hood in this shoe is gonna pair up well with the Deviate Nitro 2 if they're using this as your daily trainer. Now, the other racing shoe that I think could be really interesting to pair this with, and this is a shoe that I haven't been recommending that often, although I'm not really sure why I have it. I think I've just been underrating it. It's the Mizuno Wave Rebellion Pro. Again, this is another shoe that's a little bit on the firm side, but really responsive and very fun to do hard workouts and racing in. Again, I think that's gonna pair up really nicely with the DV8 Nitro 2 and its foams. Now, let's take a look at the buying guide for this shoe. This shoe comes in at 160 bucks. Again, that's a price that I think is just a lot for a running shoe, uh, and we're seeing a lot of shoes this year in 2023 hitting that $160 price point, but let's see where the competition stacks up. I think one shoe that comes to mind when I ran it in the DV8 Nitro 2 was the Brooks Hyperion Max. Now, this is another shoe that is made out of nitro foams. It's not the Nitro Elite type of foam that we saw in the Puma, but it's kind of more akin to this foam that's in the heel of the DV8 Nitro 2, this white material. These are both nitro foams. Uh, this one does not have a plate, but it has a really nice stack height and geometry that makes it suitable for both easy runs, but also mainly for me for sessions. This shoe comes in at $170. I do think that this one is definitely overpriced, uh, but it is more expensive than the Nitro 2. The Nitro 2 wins in the pricing category on that one. Here's where things get a little bit more difficult for the Nitro 2. I think another shoe that actually stacks up really well is the Adizero SL. Now, this is a shoe from Adidas that uses just kind of like their regular foam, uh, Light Strike, uh, as the main foam that's in the shoe. And there's a little puck up in the forefoot. You can't see it, but it's in this area right here of their racing foam. So we've got a combination of racing foams and daily training foams. The Adizero SL doesn't have a plate in it and it's much more kind of like comfort oriented. So it's definitely more daily trainer than it is speed workout shoe. So they're slightly different shoes, but right now the Adizero SL is $120 and that's full retail price. And the weird thing about Adidas is sometimes they just put their shoes on sale for no reason and then it goes back to regular price. A week ago, I did a review where I suggested the Adizero SL as a competitor shoe and it was on sale for $98. Now it's backed up to 120, but even at 120, I feel like it's a really good value for what you're getting. 
compared to the 160 of the Deviate Nitro 2. Not to say that the Nitro 2 isn't worth 160. I'm just saying I'm not a huge fan of this $160 price point for like pretty much every other shoe that comes across my desk. So those are my thoughts on the Deviate Nitro 2 from Puma. Let me know in the comments if you have any other questions or better yet, stop by the live stream that I do Monday through Friday right here on YouTube. I'd love to talk to you guys in the chat. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of the video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs and I'll see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?